Hi, I'm Neil, and I'm currently living in Taipei, Taiwan. Hi, I'm Simon de la Rivera, and I currently live in Stellenbosch, South Africa. Um, we are twins, and we like to discuss tech topics. Um, we Each episode, we discuss two topics. I choose one, Simon chooses one, but we keep the topics hidden until we film the show. And this is Twin Tech Talk. Okay, so let's do uh, uh, rock, paper, rock, scissors. scissors. Okay, let's okay. go. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I win. Okay, again. you win. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, this is a very interesting topic to me. Um, there's a few things surrounding it that it's really interesting, and I think going forward it's going to become really more interesting and crazier and so forth. Um, the topic is asteroid mining. Right. Oh um, yes, yes. So, as uh, people might not know, I'm just going to do some bit background. Last year, there was a company launched called Planetary Resources Inc., and it is headed up by and people massive, um, uh, big names are involved. People like Peter Diamandis. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, last surname. Uh, people like Larry Page, Sergey, James Cameron. And the the team they got together seems really impressive, and the they really seem like they can actually pull this off and become like the first awesome profitable space mining company. Um, but the other news last week was there's a new space asteroid mining company launched called um, Deep Space Industries, right? Yeah. <laughs> These names are awesome. They sound so like so sci-fi. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's something, there's two things about this that's really interesting. I, first, the first thing is I really um, think planetary resources business model is really good. I think instead of just relying on one, like very useful big spaceship, for for example, something like uh, what's NASA, what NASA is doing with the, the Curiosity rover. I mean, it's a really expensive thing, and it only has one chance to succeed. I mean, if it fails, then you've lost. Yeah. Lots of years of investment and money, right? But yeah, the way planetary time, resource, obviously. yeah, the way the planetary resources is doing it is they are building these very small satellites called the first well, first ones are called the Arcid 100s. It's like literally like 11 kilogram satellite, right? They did a, um, a tech update last week as well. And what they do is they launch all these Arcid 100s into space to go prospect the asteroids around it. <laughs> so it means. <laughs> It means they can piggyback on a lot of launch launches, right? Because these satellites yeah. are so small. So, I mean, they they don't have to rely on really that much on hiring, say, a SpaceX rocket to to put, get stuff put it into, in the air. Into orbit, and, yeah. and the thing is, these things are designed so that it's cheap to manufacture. I mean, eleven kilogram satellite. These things can fail and probably will fail, right? So they yeah. do this like mm -hmm. massive like shotgun approach. And I really dig that business model. Um, <laughs> that yes. Uh, the other the other thing um, that's interesting now is the um, deep 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 space industries, right? They yeah. they haven't really they they announced they want to do this, but they haven't really um, put forth like very they put forth like ideas um, that's in a way similar to to planetary resources where they eventually want to do a base in space where they can manufacture the stuff and then send it out and what and whatnot. Um, but they are still looking for sponsorships and investment, right? So the one yeah. thing that's that that's that I would like to discuss and I think that's quite interesting is these sort of projects are the time frame for these sort of projects are like big. You know, it's not it's not a five year company, of ten year company, it's twenty year company. It's much longer, yeah. much longer than yeah. that. And mm -hmm. I mean, to when 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 will it eventually start being profitable? I mean, and and to what extent should you wait and just keep investing in these like asteroid mining companies? I mean, should you keep doing it because the return is going to be so incredibly massive? I mean, apparently, like one. One asteroid full of platinum is worth trillions of the, dollars. The thing, yeah, but okay. The thing is, I, I'm not really knowledgeable on on these kinds of 
returns and how long it takes to get the stuff and, and what the time frame is. I mean, it, I suspect it is a very long time frame. But if you're gonna if 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 you're gonna create a private business around it, right, then your sort of time frame or business plan in that sense to get an investment it must be something where people go, ah, cool, you know, if I invest now, twenty years from now, I'm gonna I'm gonna start raking in the money yeah. or the investment is gonna be something of value. But I think I mean they I can't speak for the investors themselves, but I think there's a certain part of people that might also go, this is something that will improve humanity in that kind of sense, and that's why they invest in this. It's not necessarily that they know that they're going to get their money back, but more from the sense of actually doing something Audacious. really, really, really. Yes, I mean it's actually unreal when you think about it. Like yeah. asteroid mining, it's 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 just it's such an absurd concept. Yeah, it is. Um, and the fact that there are private companies doing this, yeah, that is even weirder. You know, yeah. you, you wouldn't expect that. You, you wouldn't expect this to have happened. I mean, or the news of that being open in the past two years that mm. we've no, now heard about this. Yeah, no, it's 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 really exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm just I was just thinking about in terms of. Um, it's going to be exciting to see because the first spacecraft, uh, the Arcid 100, is um, planned for the 2014 launch. And yeah. I think the first spacecraft that Deep Space Industries want to put in space is 2015 already. So it's it's quite exciting and it's I re I'm really excited to see what, what comes of this. Um, I'd really like to see. And it's, the other thing awesome to see is like, I personally think it's this sort of uh, new pioneering sort of capitalist driven yeah. space race and that's really exciting <laughs> i mean it's it is yeah yeah so and do you yeah. know do you know any more technical details on how they are actually going to get the things from the asteroid back to earth um well as far or are as they going to use I, it i think i'm not entirely sure but i think the idea is, is that um it's dismantled in space and it's mined in space rather than bringing it down and Yes, yes, yes. That, that, that's what I mean. They, they probably mine it there and get the resources. Yeah. But do they then just fly it back to Earth and collect it? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Actually, it, see, because... that's that's the thing. It, it, I mean, if you think of, of it in the sort of like the the bigger sci-fi concept of it, it would it would be really cool if there was like a space station kind of thing that's living there and you go mine this stuff on asteroids and just bring it back to the space station where you convert and then build further. Yeah. You know, keep it in, in outer space kind of idea. But that's that's yeah. very sort of like sci-fi thinking. I yeah. mean, I've, I've no science background in this. But it just sort of makes sense in that way. Yeah. To, and if you're doing asteroid mining, just, I mean, it reminds me of that, what's that movie, uh, Titan AE. Yeah. Where um, the the people were living in the spaceship and then they would go out on these things and go mine the asteroids, manual labor, mine the asteroids and then yeah. come back. You know, that that was their job. Yeah, but I don't think it would ever be manually done. It would all, all be done with robots. But, no. Yeah. Um, I, the other thing as well, I think I think the long-term plan for these kind of asteroid mining companies is to keep it in space because the the most difficult thing actually or what the most expensive part is getting getting stuff into space. That's... And that's yeah. what SpaceX is now doing, completely making it very much cheaper. But, I mean, st stuff like water, that asteroid mm -hmm. mining will be crucial to, 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 uh, to not have to bring up water from Earth, to keep it there for loads of manufacturing, uh, yeah. life supply, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually one of the things that was... Um, um, People don't know about that. That's actually one of the more valuable things that are, that are yeah. in these asteroids. Yeah. But the thing is, for me, is that, okay. This is the interesting question. Okay, there are some really interesting invest in investors, like in the planetary resource one. Okay, yeah. it's an interesting group of people. Okay. Mm. And besides the obvious thing of this being a badass thing, mm. which gives it sort of a, re <laughs> a, a mm. reason to do it. I mean, I understand the fact that. We need resources. We need yeah. energy. Yeah. We need to mine resources to continue. Yeah. Okay, but why are those people 
that like James Cameron, um, name what what are the other people? Um, like uh, the Larry and Sergey are also involved. Larry and Sergey, why 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 are they doing that? I think it's what you said. I think it's what you said earlier. It's it's, it's about people saying um, this isn't something that we expect. We expect this. We do this investment to make massive return. Of course, that's that's obviously what you should aim for, and it's mm -hmm. going to make massive amounts of money. But it's more these sort of altruistic tech people doing it for um, the betterment of society. Progress, yeah, the progress of science, yeah. kind of idea. Um, Okay, I, I, okay, I can get behind that, but uh, I, I, it, what, what was, what was the, what's the company of the one of the Google, um, or, or, which one is it? Larry Sergey, his wife, doing the, the DNA, the, the, gene, gen, genetic genome. What's the company's name again? Say again. Uh, the genetic sequencing. Oh, uh, Twenty Three and Me, isn't it? Twenty Three, yes, something, yes. Yeah. Twenty Three and Me. I think that's sort of the similar idea of. Um, investing in those kind of things that will basically change um, you, humanity and how we understand it in a sort of bigger perspective yeah. and investing in, into those kind of things. I mean, it's, but just, I mean if, it's, if, if, if you think about it, these, these kind of things that they invest in is stuff that it's the future. It's going to happen either way. I mean, <laughs> and the future. <laughs> it's going to happen either way. And you're either going to invest now in something like um, the planetary resources, which is a very good mm. idea to invest, uh, there's a very good amount of people involved in this. If it's going to fail, mm. then it's still these people already they like 19 billion dollars worth worth. I mean, to them to invest and keep something like this going for a while, it's not it's 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 it's, it's pocket change. It's change. So, yeah. I mean, and I think and, and I, then even though it fails, you know, at least you did a part to push that forward. Um, the mm. sort of altruistic goal of improving society. Same, yeah. yeah. I think I think even yeah, like I said, even even if this thing takes a long time frame and the results may not be very um, quick, the results aren't very. You can't see them really mm. quickly, like in the next five, ten years or whatever. The fact that um, as any science related kind of thing, even if it fails, it's still a result. Yeah. Um, yeah. They will still know. For next companies, like okay, this is what we did wrong. Yeah, exactly. this is not how to approach the problem exactly. of asteroid mining. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Asteroid mining. <laughs> I mean, I could keep saying it's ridiculous. Asteroid <laughs> yeah. mining. Yeah, it's um, it's, uh, it's the the uh, Chris Lewicki, which is in, which is involved um, with uh, planetary resources. <laughs> His job title, right, is president yeah. and chief asteroid miner at Planetary Resources Inc. <laughs> how awesome is that? That is so badass. Mm. I mean, geez, that's so cool. Um, okay. Another, uh, just okay, well, I, I, will, I, I will invest just to get that title. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Um, <laughs> Worth the billions of dollars. <laughs> the, the, one of the other interesting things about the Planetary Resources thing is mm. James Cameron, right? He's, mm, yeah. um, he was the, he's the person that has been the lowest point in yeah. all of humanity, getting to the bottom of the yeah. Mariana Trench, right? And yeah. by some way, if we're still alive, or in s and planetary resources decided to get up a space base further than we've ever went, then you can possibly be simultaneously the person who has been the deepest in Earth and the furthest, furthest away. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's quite wow. exciting. Wow. Now we just need a uh, the core type machine to go <laughs> even deeper into it. <laughs> uh, Everybody, I think I think James Cameron just wants to discover Avatar. Yeah, or un unobtainium. Go and mine some unobtainium. Uh, un un <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Yes, it's going to be exciting to see what happens. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I, 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 mean, it's, I, it's, I think a lot of people are being inspired by this. So people potentially mm. going well. The I same with go the same with the. SpaceX. Yeah, the same with the SpaceX. You know, it's 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 a totally new um, sort of I wouldn't say renaissance in the space race, but it's it's uh, let's put it this way: it's a very public one. It's yeah. a very public one. There might have been a lot of progress behind the scenes, but at this time it's very public. Yeah, people yeah. want people want to be inspired, and um, even 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 NASA, who did the whole curiosity thing, live streaming yeah. everything, it was phenomenal to see it. Yeah, and, and it's so it's sort of cool in a way how it sort of 
infiltrates back into popular culture, mainstream culture. Yeah. People people get mm-hmm. excited about it, even though they haven't been involved in science or, or engineering or anything. So that's yeah. that's quite I, cool to see. I, I, I mean, the, 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 the Curiosity rover thing has been phenomenal. Uh, the On the Facebook, it's Facebook page. I don't know if you like the Facebook page. It posts updates very regularly of what, what the mission is happening. happening yeah. And they actually, they actually posted in a very sort of very pop culture kind of way when the curiosity dusted some stuff off di- of the dirt to get to yeah. the rock underneath. They posted a picture and they said, don't brush your shoulders off. Uh, I was like, clever. no way. That is, that is so clever. That is, that is actually making That's something really as like that accessible to anyone. You know? mm. Mm. But anyway, yes, like I said, they're making these things public and it's, and it's badass in a way and it's inspiring people, which is cool. good. Yeah. Cool, I think it's time cool, for topic number one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sure. Next topic. Okay, so my topic is going to be about phablets. <laughs> Have you heard of the term? <laughs> yeah. Phablets. Uh, uh, right. Phone okay, and for tablet. those that don't. Yes, it's phone a portmanteau of phone and tablet, and you get yeah. a phablet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now the thing, the thing, the reason why I talk about the phablet is because here in Taiwan, I've noticed something interesting that I've never seen in South Africa before, yeah. is the amount of big phones in Taiwan. When I ride on the subway, I see it every time. People have these big phones, and it's 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 different. It's really really different, and um, so especially being in Asia, the Samsung Galaxy Note, you see it everywhere. Yeah. It, uh, you see ads on TV, you see, you see um, billboards, you see people um, actually using it. And that was one of the most mind-boggling things because, I mean, you remember that article where the guy joked about the Galaxy Note and how awesome it is. I mean, I can use it as my TV, you know, yeah. put it there, and sit it on the joke, couch and I use mean... it as my TV. But that that's... That's the interesting thing. And I did some research on, on phablets. There is actually a Wikipedia article on phablets. <laughs> that the Galaxy Note, the Galaxy Note is the first commercially successful phablet. Okay? Yeah. A phablet's definition is, it, it, well, according to the article, it's between 5 and 7 inches, okay. the screen size. But now okay? it's gone higher, as far seven. as I know. Um, Larger. Uh, the the, the, the uh, Galaxy Note 2, wait, I made a... I made a Document here. Didn't, the Galaxy didn't, Note. Didn't Huawei or someone announce CES like this over six inches? Yes. Yeah. The, the the Galaxy Note is at 5.3, 5.3 inch, yeah. and the Galaxy S3 is at four point six. Okay. Yeah. Now five point three obviously five point three falls into the phablet. The phablet. Okay, but. Now, 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 the thing for me which, which makes it interesting is um, when the Galaxy Note first came out, it was ridiculed. It was like, no one wants this. Who wants this massive thing? Like, it's ridiculous. This is way too big, okay? And what, what the success of it obviously tells a different story. Yeah. Now, there was a phablet, there was a phablet phone before the Galaxy Note, um, which actually coined the term fan, which is called the Dell Streak, which came out in 2000. Oh, I remember that. They had this like the Dell Streak. They had this promotion campaign with these. Um, this famous like dance group and everything that. This, yeah. Yeah. And 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 that phone came out in 2010, but uh, people said it was a really awesome build, good hardware, but unfortunately the software was lacking and it wasn't. I thought I thought the Dell Streak was just a tablet. I didn't know it was a phone as well. <laughs> exactly. But see, but see how the conception of these things changes so quickly. And that's that's a sort of interesting thing about the phablets is I actually saw someone post this on Facebook the other day. Te- technology becomes like this. When you carry it around with you, you want it as small as possible. But when you use it, you want it as big as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And 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 that sort of like um, connection of where you find that good size um, is sort of like a weird zone of what you don't know yeah. where you want that. And the interesting thing is this about the Galaxy Note and the bigger size phones is that once you use it and you go back to a phone that's smaller, yeah. I mean, you probably experienced it with your S3. Once yeah. you go to a smaller phone, you go, oh, what the hell? No. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. No, that's you. Know, I um, can't. What's this? But uh, I think, you know, I, think that, I wonder what, uh, uh, this is my guess now and why the Dell Streak didn't succeed, right? Is mm. that screen phone sizes has been has increased incrementally, right? 
Yes. I think perhaps a dull streak was just a little too early. And yes. I also think, uh, that, yes. I, I also think um, the dull streak have Android, right? Um, no, I don't think it had Android. I'm not sure. But I, think the, I don't think it had. The maturity of the Android ecosystem really improved from Ice Cream Sandwich, right? So I suspect yeah. that those two combinations meant that it can be more acceptable. And as you said, to me the most interesting thing is exactly as you said, when I when when I was hesitant to get an S3 because of the screen size, right? I, yeah. uh, I was like it's not I I wanted something between like the iPhone iPhone size like the four S size yeah. and the iPhone five, right? iPhone 5 is also an awesome screen size, but the, 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 I was really hesitant, right, because you know, obviously normal hesitance, but when I started using it, it became a thing of not caring anymore. It's, it's really not an issue, right? And what's yeah. interesting to me, when I look at my phone now, I'm like, I look at my phone, I'm like, okay, cool, no, this is not big. But then the interesting thing, as you said, is when I, when I read Pocket, right, when I read Pocket, yeah. um, the articles that I saved, then the screen size feels small. It feels small. Yeah. Um, it yeah. feels like uh, this can perhaps be a bit bigger, right? So, yeah. to me, like this screen size is awesome. And I suspect, by the way I've behaved in using this phone, <laughs> I think I might actually be okay using a Galaxy Note, right? It might yeah. actually not but be that bad. Yeah. But see, here's the, here's the interesting thing. Wait, wait. Is where just, just hang on a moment. I think I, I have my old Sony Ericsson or just around next to the corner. So just I'm going to see okay. if I can find it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Call a, call yeah. a joke or something. <laughs> um, the, the, the interesting thing about the, the Galaxy Notes that I've seen here on the trains is, is that the people on the trains, obviously as well, people have earphones in all the time. They actually don't stop listening. Um, and that sort of kind of thing with, 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 with earphones in as well, the whole time makes me actually realize that people are starting to use phones as a phablet type thing. If they don't have a tablet, they want it bigger. They want it to go as big as possible without being too big. And that sort of idea is, is which probably goes into another topic of if you have other kinds of devices which fulfills the role of what you want out of a mobile device, will you go for the bigger one or not? And the, the interesting thing is this, when it comes to phablets, okay, and generally smartphones these days, is that the actual phone capability with the original traditional idea of a phone, the calling and the text messaging, yeah. is probably 20% of, of what you use in your phone these yeah. days, okay? So if, 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 if someone has a tablet, right, like, uh, I, I, like let's, say, let's say the 7-inch tablet, we don't even need to talk about the 10-inch yeah. ones, the 7-inch tablets, yeah. okay, then... If that thing is just as connected and just as accessible as, as, as stuff that you can get on a phablet type phone or a very big phone, then it will, might be okay to just get a smaller phone, you yeah. know? And that's, a, that's, the, that's, a, that's an interesting thing that's going to happen. Are people going to, to get one device which does all these things? Sort of con convergence. Get, yes, convergent in one device or get different ones that serve different purposes. I think, um, the, now that you mention it, right, the Ubuntu, Ubuntu OS, right, the, ideas, yeah. the idea from the Ubuntu OS is that you will have your phone that's a certain mm -hmm. screen size, right, and then yeah. you can plug and play it with, def, with various different screen sizes. And this includes, yeah. say, going, you dock your thing and then wirelessly you use a tablet size, which is, thus, which is basically just a stream from your phone kind of thing and the other yep. one is like using a normal large 24 inch screen and it will yep. fulfill the same functions as Ubuntu does now um, yeah and you can also go see now actually now at this moment I saw a video with where people where, where a guy did it with the Galaxy Note 2 right yes where, I saw that where, where doctors where doctors um, Note 2 and use it exactly as a PC replacement and it could yeah it could function entirely as a PC replacement um, you could multitask, like you stress tested, you could watch 20 YouTube videos at the same time and, and then it only started pushing up, like really pushing the CPUs. And yeah. there's Office and everything, Google Docs. It's entire, you, you, can, you don't need another device unless, not, yeah. but the arguments where we'd need another device is 
only only reason why I would need a more powerful resource device is if I'm going to do um, video production and maybe audio Gaming. production. But uh, audio production you can do well, but video production needs just a lot of resources, right? But yeah. I mean, the games, like we said previous in the previous episode, is perfect. You yeah. don't you don't need a large thing anymore, and then. Yeah, there's also examples where it plays games in this big screen and it works fine. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I, it's it's going to be interesting to see if this trend is, is going to be actually, will it be that one device fits all? Um, see, now, I, 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 I want to give an example of something that I thought the other day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Saffron, my girlfriend, bought uh, the new Nano iPod the other day. Okay. Yeah. This thing is. And, and, well, in general, it's pretty cool. I quite like it. I use yeah. it sometimes. It's really good. Okay. When I took this on the train the other day, I thought to myself, how cool would it be if I can have just this as my phone? And all it does, it allows me to, to phone people, send an SMS, and send instant messages. That's all I wanted to do. Nothing else. I don't want to take pictures. Nothing more. Okay. See, this is the, the sort of thing when it comes about convergence into one device or different devices. Like, say, for instance, I because when I go to work, I don't, I don't use my 3G on my phone, really. I go to work, sit there, do my lesson planning, go teach a class, and then come back. Okay, So I'm not, using, I'm not really using the extra stuff on my phone anymore. The only time when I use it is when I'm here, when I'm lying in bed, I want to quickly read some email, check yeah. Reddit or whatever. Yeah. But that I can do on a tablet. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. This, if you have something like this, which is the only thing that that, that serves the traditional function of a phone, mm. then I would I would quickly, if I go to the shop or go to shopping mall or whatever, unless unless you um, go um, somewhere where you need like Google mm. Maps or something, like that, that's a different purpose. Yeah. But just as something that is the sole purpose is just a connectivity device. It just connects you to the yeah. traditional thing of, of a phone, yeah. and that sort of idea was sort of very. I quite liked it. I quite like yeah. the idea but, I mean, of it's, not, yeah. not carrying something big with me anymore, like a big tablet or anything like that. The only time when I would do that is when I know I can use it for an extended amount of time. Yeah. If I know I need to get your Google Maps, if I know I'm going to sit in, in the train for an hour and then I can maybe surf the internet, read some articles, play a game, learn some words or whatever. But if I know I'm not going to use it, then all I really need is this because I want to be able to contact people. Yeah. I'm not saying this exactly. I mean, like a size of a thing like this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, it's um. But I mean, as you mentioned, there's various use cases where you would want smaller devices, larger devices, mm. and desktops, and a various range of things. And exactly. Various mm. situations in which you want different things and so forth and so forth. Mm. And it's going to be interesting if 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 that happens, that the user experience would be in such a way that. It's obviously it won't be a nuisance to be able to quickly just upgrade or use different screen sizes and whatever. It's just yeah. it's, it's and it but it might be that in the future the, it might actually be the case that it can easily just get larger. Whereas it's, you want yeah. to use it in different ways. But now 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 I think here's the best solution of all of that is actually hopefully in the future having flexible hardware in the sense that. You can fold your phone down into a size like this, yeah. right? And th this interface will still be used. Yeah. And then if you want to use it as a tablet, you just fold it out and then you have a, a tablet-sized thing. That's exactly the same device, yeah. right? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. That sort of flexible technology, we can just, okay, okay, cool. No, I don't want to read this big article anymore. Flip, 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 roll it in. Okay, cool. Now it's like this. Put it in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that would actually be the best solution. Because yeah, then obviously you, be, you take away the nuisance of having to dock to different screen sizes or whatever mm. way you use to. Uh, yeah. and other, another way I suspect this could happen is that you have like the small device, you have the small device, yeah. which is the basic version, right? And then yeah. by Wi Fi or some sort of wireless manner, you can decide to take along your other screen with you, right? So then the smallest one yes. will just fit in your pocket yes. or something. And yes. then out of your backpack, you pull out your larger screen and now you can use it, blah, 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 put it back. And then if you don't want to take your larger screen with you, just don't. Yeah. 
I like that's, that too. That's also that's, a good solution. That's that's a way. That, so, <laughs> and yeah, I, that that would be cool. Also, if you can then do it with like a big bigger monitor as well. Yeah. You know? So the only thing that really connects to everything is like a small device like this, but it can function as yeah. everything also. Because uh, yeah. in, in a way, then this device will just sort of, if you decide to not use the smallest version, it's just something that sort of sits in your body the whole time. Yeah, just in put a way, it in, sort your, of, in your, in in your wallet. Of, just put it in your wallet. Imagine this. Far, far into the you know, few years into the future, you just embed, this, you just embed this, this device in your body, right? And then yeah. the screens are just dumb devices connecting to this your cell phone. Hey. Yes, while we're following all the news of the asteroid mining. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, like I just that. I just want to show you I went to fetch my old phone, right? And when I yeah. when I when I found this lying there the other day, I was really surprised by how small it felt. It really felt like a baby phone. It felt like I was like, about to eat some piece of candy. It's weird. So take take this is like Johnny's and I must say phone. I must say this was one of my favorite phones I've ever had. The Sony K, Sony Ericsson K seven fifty I, right? Um, yeah, and the sort of like you open it, that kind of thing, right? It was yeah. a really great phone. I really enjoyed. Yes, it. I remember. Um, I also had one. It was awesome. Uh, robust and like it did everything you wanted to do, and so yeah. forth, right? And then now here's my my Galaxy S3, right? <laughs> so you can see the you can see you can see the difference, right? It's like really <laughs> tiny. It's like it really feels like it's like you can like close it, almost close your hand around it, like. It's it's ridiculous. It's that is actually a weird. really awesome comparison. I like that. Strange, right? Wow. <laughs> it's, but but you see, that's the thing. If you think back on using the case into the eye, you would have thought that, that thing was a lot bigger. Yeah. You've got exactly. this idea in your mind that the phones were bigger. Yeah, that, that this it wasn't was a bigger small. thing. I mean, it wasn't I, that small. I can't imagine now. I'm remembering I to like I and people in this small screen. It's like it's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyway, uh, things change way too quickly, man. Yeah. But phablets, <laughs> phablets, I like that word, phablets. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're a bit um, thirty-two minutes. I think uh, that's, yeah. that's it for not, this episode. Not, uh, yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Awesome, man. Um, just want to show the people here. I'm busy drinking a mango fruit beer. Um, it's it sort of tastes like a, a, a brutal fruit. Um, it's only got two point eight percent alcohol. Just Very nice say, drink. A uh, brutal fruit is sort of like a Bacardi based alcohol. Yes, sort of like an alcohol pop. Yes, yeah. sort of like an alcohol pop. You get it in South Africa as well. Yeah. But anyway, it's down at the local shop, having a nice, nice, Mango nice drink, beer. chatting That's with so my brother. That's so strange. Yes. Anyway, okay. awesome man. Cool man. Cool. Cheers. Till next episode. Yeah. Cool. Cheers. Bye.